Welcome to today's lecture. We're going to learn about macromolecules today. And we're going to start off this with kind of a question. Why do we eat food? So, right, we look at all of this different food. Why do we eat? Well, what comes to mind a lot of times is that we need energy, right? Food is a source of energy. Or that food provides us with the, body, the building blocks that we need for our bodies. Um, but you also need to consider that we need to eat, eat nutrients like vitamin E or iron. And um, why is it that we need these? Well, these nutrients are called micronutrients because we need them in very small amounts. They're critical for the functioning of, our, of many enzymes, um, which enzymes, again, are just proteins, but proteins that have specific shape that um, help in, um, in reactions in the body to help speed up or slow down reactions in the body. <clears throat> for example, iron is a part of hemoglobin, and this is a, the molecule that is essential for carrying of oxygen in the blood. And so this, the molecule, um, iron, um, helps in this process, helps the enzyme in this process perform its function. Well, what about things that like lettuce or celery? Are these full of energy and nutrients? Well, not really. Um, they're, they're mostly just... Um, they have just roughage, right? And so we just kind of need to eat those to help help everything else also work smoothly through the digestive system. So as we've talked here for just a moment, we've come up with kind of some different categories of reasons why we eat food. We've said that there's energy, and so we have lots of things that are pictured here, like potatoes and cereal and sugars and breads and so forth. We have building blocks like the beef jerky, which has proteins and, and uh, nuts. We have the enzyme helpers. So these are the micronutrients that we have. And then we have um, also the things that, that uh, we consider to be the fiber, right, that help in our stool bulkers. Right? They help, um, help the digestive system. And some of, of course, some of these things like yogurt could be placed in multiple different categories. But if we just simplify things down to these four categories, these are the main four categories that, um, uh, of, of materials that are part of what we eat. And it so happens that energy, for the most part, come from carbohydrates and fats. So these are the molecular, um, the molecular version of these of what we call energy are carbohydrates and fats. Proteins are the building blocks. Vitamins and minerals are the enzyme helpers, and indigestible carbohydrates are the stool bulkers. So what we're going to do is throughout this uh, video, I'm going to be filling out kind of this table of macromolecules. And if you want, you could make a, a similar table on your notes or whatever. And we'll kind of go through these four different categories of, of uh, molecules here, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And um, for each of these, we'll identify the name of the polymer, the name of the monomer, if, if there is one, and the function, the elements, some examples. And then just for fun, uh, you can think about, is this present in a grape? I mean, right now you could even say, are these four things all present in a grape? And we, we'll reveal that as we go along. So let's first talk about carbohydrates. So carbohydrates um, are basically built from small sugars, from these, these sugars that are, that are these ringed structures here. And you can see there's slight differences, but for the most part, they're made out of of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And if I were to take a bunch of these glucoses and stick them together in this chain here, then I take the monomer glucose and stick them together and they become a polymer, which is a polysaccharide in this case because it is made up of many, many sugar molecules. Sometimes you can just make a disaccharide where you have just two sugars stuck together. For example, sucrose is a glucose and a fructose. And sucrose, of course, is table sugar. You can also make a disaccharide called lactose. And this is a galactose molecule and a glucose molecule come together. So these are disaccharides. And you can have, again, um, monosaccharides, disaccharides, or polysaccharides, where there's many, many, many of these glucose monomers all, st all stuck together. So the next category within the carbohydrates are things like starches, right? So potatoes are a wonderful example of starchy foods. Um, and then you can also take these uh, sugar, these polysaccharides, and build them up together and, and organize them in such a way that they become cellulose. And so starches and cellulose also 
as you can see, are built from these glucose chains that are being put together. But the difference is the, the way in which they're put together. So starches are put together with these alpha bonds. Don't worry so much about that, but they're put together in such a way that our bodies can break these down and can take advantage of the energy that's found in, um, in each of the glucose molecules that make up this, this larger chain. But the way in which they're put together only allows our bodies to break them down a little bit at a time. This is why, you know, if you're going to do some big marathon or a sporting event, uh, the night before you would eat foods that are, that are starch, high in starch, because that way you can get a little bit of that energy a little bit at a time, right? You wouldn't want to just eat a bunch of just table sugar, you know, right before the marathon, because that will give you a lot of energy for just a set for, for a short, a brief period of time, but not over a long period of time, because our bodies can quickly take that glucose and turn it into energy, but it then runs out. And so starches uh, are able to, to give us energy over a longer period of time. But the same is not true for cellulose. We do not have the ability in our bodies to break down cellulose. And so cellulose, uh, things like celery and lettuce, for the most part, most of what is there never even gets broken down, doesn't ever get digested. It just simply moves through um, the digestive system as fiber, as roughage. So we can now fill out our first column where carbohydrates, the name of the polymer is polysaccharide, the name of the monomer is monosaccharide. The function is, is mostly for energy, but also for roughage in, in, the, in the case of um, cellulose. Um, it's made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And there are some of the examples, right? Starch, cellulose, glucose. Is it present in a grape? Yes, it is. The next category are the um, energy molecules that are contained in the lipids group. And so here you can see some examples of lipids. Let's first look up here. This is a fat molecule or a triglyceride. And that's because it has this glycerol head over here, this gl glycerol end, and then these fatty acids coming off this way. And there's three of these fatty acids, so it's a triglyceride. Um, and triglycerides then have, um, can also be attached to a phosphate group and again, this is what makes up the membrane, the, the phospholipid membrane structure that we've talked about before. Um, fatty acids can also be either saturated or non-saturated. So perhaps you've heard of this, you know, a saturated fatty acid or a saturated fat or unsaturated. And the difference is, is simply um, in an unsaturated fatty acid, there is a double bond between two of the C's, two of the carbons, instead of just a single um, shared covalent bond here. And so you can see up here, here's another example of that double bond. And so you get a bent um, fatty acid chain that kind of comes down and bends. And so this is why saturated fats can, can essentially be stacked on each other much more tightly. And so saturated fats are solid at room temperature, whereas unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature because these these fatty acid the kinks that have bent these out spread the molecules out more and they're they're um, liquid at room temperature so things like vegetable oil the next group that we're going to look at are steroids so steroids come from um, cholesterol so again cholesterol is something that we need to have in our diets um, not in excess but we should have cholesterols because from cholesterols our bodies can make the molecules of estrogen and testosterone that are needed. So steroids are also an important part. So let's come back now to our table of macromolecules and we can see that for lipids, the name of the polymer is simply lipid. There really is no monomer. So the name of the structure here is just a lipid. Um, the function, once again, is mostly energy. It's also made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Some examples are oil and lard and steroids and phospholipids and so forth. Is it present in a grape? Yes, as well. Now we'll come to the building blocks, or the proteins. So proteins are made up also from a monomer and polymer um, um, type um, structure. So the monomers, in this case, are the amino acids, these individual amino acids, these little gray circles here. And the sequence in which these amino acids are put together is called the primary structure. That's the primary sequence of uh, protein. 
And so, for example, if we look at the back four here, we can see there's a phenylalanine, a leucine, a serine, and a cysteine. And so these are the four amino acids that are stuck together in this particular way. And if we zoom in on the, the one of these amino acids, we can see that it has this uh, carbon that has an amino group on the top, um, an R group coming down, um, a C double bond, uh, C um, O O H, and an H on the other side. And this is kind of the structure of all amino acids with the R group that just changes. And as that R group changes, then you get the different amino acids. So the primary structure, the, the particular sequence of amino acid residues, leads to the secondary structure because as these, um, these different amino acids are present on this chain, they interact with one another and they start to form specific types of structures. For example, you can get alpha helices or you could get beta sheets which fold back on each other. And that's called secondary structure, these alpha helices or beta sheets. Then these structures fold on themselves again based on these interactions between the molecules. There's parts of them that are hydrophobic and parts that are hydrophilic and there's parts that are charged positively and parts that are charged negatively. And because of all of this, it folds then again up into this tertiary structure. And so now you've got this this really well-defined three-dimensional uh, three shape. And um, po multiple polypeptide chains can all, can all be put together to, for quaternary structure. Um, and so you can get kind of, you know, this even larger molecule, this larger protein molecule that's made up of multiple chains. And it's the, the shape of the protein is important. In fact, the shape determines the function. And, it, and what's interesting is it all comes back to the primary structure. The primary structure determines the way in which it begins to fold and then folds some more and ultimately has its final shape. And this is why the primary structure determines the ultimate shape of the protein. And the primary structure, as we'll learn in, a, in another lecture, is determined by the underlying DNA um, of, the, of the gene for which this, this protein comes from. So this is a um, quick graph of the different amino acids. There are 20 of them, and some of these are nonpolar. Some of these are polar. So nonpolar means they have ch do not have charge to them. Polar means they have charge. They have an end that is positive, more positively charged overall and an end that is more negatively cho charged overall. Um, some of these are acidic. Some of these are basic, and so forth. And so it's these different um, characteristics of these amino acids that cause them to fold up and, and re react with one another to have these specific shapes to form the, the, the final shape of the protein. Because again, it's the shape that matters for the protein because the shape determines the function. So we can now f fill out our table of macromolecules for proteins. The name of the polymer is a polypeptide which then becomes a protein. The name of the monomer are, um, is amino, are the, all of the amino acids. Proteins are essentially involved in building blocks, but they also can be involved in enzymatic activity, so helping with reactions in the body. The elements that make up proteins are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen. Um, some examples are keratin. Keratin's found in our hair and our nails. Crystalline, which are found like in the lenses of your eyes. Myosin, which is a, a protein found in your muscles that helps in the contraction of muscles, and so forth. There's many, many, many others. In fact, in humans, we have over 200,000 different kinds of proteins. Um, many of these proteins are slightly different than, than an, another protein, but there's lots and lots of different kinds of proteins that need to do different things in our bodies. And finally, are they present in a grape? And the answer is yes. So this brings us to um, nucleic acids, which is also part of our building blocks. Um, nucleic acids, we've talked about these before throughout the semester. These are the DNA and RNA bases. So we have adenine, guanine, thiamine, uracil, which is found only in RNA, not found in DNA, and cytosine. <clears throat> and you can see that the adenine and guanine are what we call purines. They are, they are formed from two rings, 
whereas the pyrimidines, thymine, uracil, and cytosine, have only one ring. <clears throat> the other part of a nucleic acid is a phosphate group, and then the last part is a sugar. So for DNA, it's a deoxyribose sugar, and for RNA, it's a ribose sugar. And so the structure of this all coming together is seen over here where we have the sugar, which is connected to a phosphate group and connected to a nitrogenous base. And when you put all of these together, the phosphorus group connected to the sugar can also connect to another sugar up above. And you can start to form this long chain. So here the monomer is a nuclei, nucleotide and the polymer is a, new, a strand, a single strand of nucleic acid. So we can now finalize our chart where we can now have nucleic acids, are, the examples are DNA and RNA, with the name of the monomer being um, a nucleotide. The, these um, molecules are involved in information storage and also is, um, that then leads to the building blocks because DNA and RNA are the ways in which cells can hold information and pass on information and use information to, to do things in the cell. The elements that are involved are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and nitrogen. So notice the, the difference here with proteins. Proteins have sulfur, whereas nucleic acids has, have phosphorus. And some examples, of course, are DNA and RNA. And um, are they present in a grape? They are as well. So even something as simple as a grape, you may say, oh, that's just a fruit. But it actually contains all of these different groups. So that's a quick intro to macromolecules.